Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here, Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and with us today we've got the Cherokee 17JG, <laughs> I've seen a lot of model numbers recently, comes in about 3,875 pounds as we see it here today in standard series. It'll weigh a little bit more in black label, by the way, keep that in mind. It is a perfect fit for a family uh, looking to do some traveling with like a 5,500 pound tow rating or above on a vehicle. The reason I say that is this has a 5,000 uh, pound like max weight after cargo, after dry weight, after everything, so it leaves you that little bit of buffer in case some yahoo won't let you um in on the off ramp of the highway or the on ramp as it were and you got to put the hammer down to get up to speed real quick it gives you that extra little nudge to, to have just enough juice to do it um obviously bigger vehicles are going to handle her better but the u dinette in this one is really the the thing that sets this one apart because it gives it a big living space in a small trailer it feels much larger than uh, the length would make you think big fridge inside plus you got the little kind of drink station outside cargo bunkhouse partridge in a pear tree leave us some comments let you uh, let us know what you like about this thing if you have any questions is there anything you'd change and as always thank you guys for watching i can't wait to see what you think about this one now starting right over here from the entry door just to give you an easy frame of reference what you're going to see on this is Cherokee did an amazing job, I think, listening to previous feedback and doing things like putting a full window in the entry door. But what's really cool is it has like a, uh, a smoky glass front, so you really can't see inside easily. And if you're interested, you can add one of those kind of shade systems and, and put your own kind of privacy shade there. Though that being said, some kind of little cloth over the window, sometimes a very easy low dollar way to accomplish the same thing. It's an unconventional placement, but your TV hookups are also right next to that because like uh, I'm basically standing at the position of the dinette. That's one of the better positions actually in this RV to get that television working. One of the uh, cool things about this camper too is it is not a reduced height trailer. You sometimes find in single axles. You find it less frequently now than you used to, but that means that you can walk under things like that uh, ceiling mounted subwoofer, that air conditioner without you know cracking your head on the knobs or something like that. Cause it's a normal traditional six and a half foot ceiling height, which is what you're gonna find in Gray Wolves and the big Cherokees. It's got, you know, the funny thing, it's got like more features in common with a big camper then a little camper, it's like a Diet Dr. Pepper. It tastes more like Dr. Pepper uh, di uh, than Diet Dr. I don't know. I think I know what I meant to say, and I also know that I absolutely just totally botched it. <laughs> so back to the task at hand. Up top here, if you're interested, you could uh, get the little uh, LCI um, one control hotspot up here so that if you wanted to, you could have like a little kind of, you know, Wi-Fi, LTE, router enabled system. One of the questions I'm going to get all the time here is what size is this bed? So if you appreciate the fact that I go out of my way to make sure we answer that uh, right away, hit that subscribe button or like the video, leave us some comments, whatever the case may be. Like pretty much all the Cherokee and Gray Wolf family, this is a 60 by 74 bed. Now, when you're in single axle campers, a 74 inch length is pretty normal, but a 60 inch width, a normal queen width is not as common. So what if you're taller? What can you do? Well, this headboard up here gives you an option. And I've seen a few folks do it. We've done it for a few folks at Halo RV. So this is a real thing, keep in mind. You've got, uh, by the way, this thing right here, these are USB plugs that happens to also be a mount for a driven Bluetooth audio speaker, which is cool. Some household outlets there. And that's a neat little phone charge and CPAP station. But you know what? There's absolutely no wiring in it. You can see a little cargo pocket under it. If you wanted to, you could remove that headboard and you could put a 60 by 80 true bed uh, or true queen bed in here. It's really up to you, I think, how you want to handle that one. Now, anytime you're in a little trailer like this, storage is always something that's at a premium. I do like how they, they made every effort they could, though, to utilize every space that was available. And in case you're curious, the reason you can see a little daylight through that baggage door is because I uh, was peeking in there to make sure it had a power cord uh, when it arrived, and I just didn't relock it yet. So that'll get done. But how nice is it? that they're building like a really well-supported bed base. Look at all those cross members there. And with a gas strut, it is about as easy to lift as they come. We will see that under both sides of the dinette, just like a bigger Gray Wolf and Cherokee, we have those full extension, like 40 inch plywood constructed drawers. And that's actually an interesting little peek into the flooring of this RV, uh, that uh, 5 eighths plywood that you're looking at right there. That is what we are walking on. 
Now they don't have full storage below the kitchen counter right there because there's stuff down there like water heater or water pump maybe. I got to double check, but there's things under there that they just can't, you know, like eliminate. The stainless sink right here, uh, that, that big round sink actually lets you get maybe some pots and pans in there. I've got the sink cover kind of out of the way. We'll see this all closed up also in just a minute. Overhead cabinet here, just to give you a reference for the space, this RV comes with a, uh, a rear view observation camera, but uh, I thought, hey, I'm going to stuff the box in there so you can see, you know, if you got cereal boxes and stuff, it'll fit in here quite nicely. Now, again, in terms of storage, as long as we're talking about that, let's look over here. We've got that 10.7 uh, cubic foot DC compressor fridge. That's uh, <laughs> that's a big honking fridge for this little space. That's the same size fridge that you're finding in a lot of fifth wheels now. And they've been doing it here in the uh, Gray Wolf series for a little while. And then once again, both sides of the dinette have those drawers. I don't have that one fully extended. That's kind of the neat thing. You don't have to pull it all the way down then wrestle it back up. You can just slide it in and out as needed. Now closing all that up and backing up just a touch, you can see here, that is what I call a full true U dinette. That is one of those like seven foot long when it folds down into a sleeper jobs. Uh, that, uh, you know, very handy if you have extra big people you need to sleep. Um, you can use it when the slide's closed if you had to, you know, for the littles or something like that. And it gives this RV sleeping capacity, let's say one, two, three, four, five to six. Six if you can double up on this thing. The countertops in here are all sealed edged. Pressed membrane, very nice, very handy. We already talked about the fridge. I got myself a little bit out of order here, but overall, I think we're doing all right. What do you think about the color palette in here? Every other manufacturer has gone like, you know, virtually white cabinetry or really light tan. Cherokee went the other way and it looks good to me. It has a very kind of regal sophistication about it. And I think uh, the way that they went light colors on the flooring and the countertops and the walls and everything else, I think it never feels really dark and oppressive in here. And instead it feels very nice and rich. Actually, this reminds me of a lot of toy haulers that I've seen. It feels good. Up top here, this RV is equipped with the Cherokee juice pack, which means it basically has, you know, in your car, you got a fuel gauge for your burning dinosaurs. This one has a fuel gauge for the lightning in your battery. That's what that is. It also has a solar panel on the roof helping keep that topped off. It's a great little battery tender system. It also has a hidden version of the LCI one control system equipped in this panel right here. If you want to, what's nice is there's just buttons. You just want to walk up, just push a button. You got it. But if you want to be able to do some of that stuff off your phone, you can and the app to do that is free the dual single beds over here the top bunk does have a uh, a full breeze window the bottom bunk obviously has that cargo door but if you're noticing the uh the handle can't really be accessed when the bed is down so if you're worried about i don't know the kids hopping out they can't and I'll also remember the fact that that door has the same deadbolt latch as your main entry door so you don't got to worry about somebody like taking your kids. Let me show you a couple other little detail things before we hit the bathroom. Just kind of caught my eye. One of them that I really like is the trim that they're putting between the wall boards and in the ceiling right here. You get to see both of them because it's, it's a T-molded plastic trim. So it is very, very hard for that to pop out of place. And it's not just like a, uh, a sticker that covers the seam that could like steam off with humidity over time because we don't always have RVs climate controlled typically only when we're using them so that you know is one less thing you got to worry about this is a Joe Friday dragnet bathroom it is a just the facts man kind of thing it has just enough of what you need like I've got acceptable leg room in here for a big person like me you've got the vent uh up top here and that actually is a vent fan amazingly a lot of single axle campers don't give you a vent fan they don't do a skylight in these, nor is it an option. I would definitely uh, option a skylight if I could. What do you think about that? Cherokee added the window in the entry door. Do you think they should add a skylight here? Give me some feedback on that. You'd be surprised how much your input really makes a difference. What that does mean is obviously at my height, 6'3"-ish, yeah, I gotta duck my head a little bit, but you know what? Uh, it's just, it just goes along. It's just part of the territory for a little camper. Now this bathroom doesn't really have room for a sink. So they kind of build a little mini sink over here into the, the bathroom and the shower in itself. And what's cool about this is if you, uh, you're not washing your hands actively in it, you can um, use it to like hold your soaps and body washes. And you see that extra cleat right there? The shower head is actually going to act like the uh, the faucet here in the shower for your, for your sink. So it's a really interesting like dual purpose arrangement. Now down here, we also have the Cherokee Shub 
That's my word for it, not theirs, admittedly. Not the smoothest rolling off the tongue. <laughs> it's not a shower. It's not a tub. What I think it is is a good in-betweener because it's deep enough you could give a baby a bath. It's deep enough that it will keep that curtain from flipping around and getting water all over the floor, but it's not so tall that you, like, trip and fall and stumble getting into it. It's a good in-betweener. Now, if you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button right here as we demonstrate our willingness to go a little bit further by showing you some slide closed footage. Now, uh, the, the travel functionality, the ability to walk through this one, it's a lot like my belt buckle uh, after Thanksgiving. It's tight, but, but, I can make it. Now, kind of like that Thanksgiving belt loop, you just gotta keep on pushing it. If you do a little sideways travel trailer two-step, you can squeeze through here. You can get to the bunks, the fridge. That being said, uh, I'm a little thick in the midsection. I got scrawny chicken legs, so it might work for some folks. It might not. So in case you're curious, the black label package like we're seeing on that big gray wolf, which is the big brother to the wolf pup we're looking at, the next step up in the Cherokee family, that is also available here. But folks, tell me that doesn't look amazing. They just even the, I, I, I hesitate to call it a base model because I feel like I'm, eh, I'm not doing it justice. The standard series, whatever you want to call it, it just looks good. You really can feel proud hauling this thing around knowing that you didn't have to go up into big giant laminated money to get to it. We're gonna kind of work our way from the back here forward. We got that cargo bunk back here. What I want to specifically point out though, kind of like I mentioned inside, it has the same deadbolt entry as your main entry door. So you don't got to worry about security issues. And what it gives you is at your discretion, you don't have to use it this way. The opportunity for all that storage space in there. Folding bikes, e-bikes, things like that would be a great fit in something like this. Under the awning, you've got all of your uh, entertainment hookups there. You see the TV hookups, the outside speakers. There is lighting under the awning. You can remote control the awning and its lighting via the uh, one control system that we mentioned inside. Now this I love over here. The little, uh, we're gonna call it dad's medicine cabinet, dad's drinking station. <laughs> now, if you want, you could put some bottled water in here and some hug juice barrels for the kids. Or what you could do is put the cheap beer in here uh, for your uh, your neighbor who always has to bum a drink, you know, who, who never brings their own and never seems to have something to share. Uh, the uh, up front here, by the way, past those stable steps, that's where you're going to see your gas grill cooker hooker. So uh, if you want to do some grilling out, in a sense, it kind of has an outdoor kitchen. It obviously doesn't have the one specific thing that you're going to point out and say, yes, that's a camp kitchen. That's an outdoor kitchen. But you could do some cooking outside. You got a fridge outside. Kind of some prep space. I mean, in a way, it's close. I'm not I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but I don't know, man. I, I think you could make it work on a little trailer like this. I think it, it can work, you know. Up front here, this is cool. The Cherokee Quick Jack with a little uh, cordless drill eight seconds up and down you can have that jack crank doing all the work for you so you know you don't got to spend the big money on things like um you know power stabilizers power jacks all that this is simple because that same drill that would run that quick jack for you it will also run your corner jacks which by the way are you noticing that you have front and rear corner jacks it boggles my mind to this day how many campers don't also include front stabilizers in a small segment like this. Now, if you're looking for a little extra protection, you got yourself some slide awning prep jobs up here. <laughs> Back here by the uh, sewer station, our little convenience light so you can see what you're doing. Because you, you definitely want to make sure you got a secure connection on that. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a stinky situation. I take no pleasure in saying that, ladies and gentlemen. I know you think I do with the way that I like to throw the terrible dad jokes out there. I took no pleasure in saying it. Spare tire is an optional piece of equipment that we like to add onto these, and I love that folding cargo rack on the back. Whether you're going to bring along some bikes, a little portable generator or anything. But look at this. That cargo rack can kind of block the taillights. Cherokee said we don't like that. We, we don't like sacrificing safety. So they added a third brake light in here. And what's cool is it even has a little Cherokee wolf insignia in it. And then as we go up past the decal, we get to see a rear view camera. We saw that box for the monitor inside, but how cool is that? It's a factory installed safety item like that. I got a feeling more and more and more companies are going to start adopting things like that standard. And I give Cherokee all the credit for pushing the boundaries. Like, you know, Rockwood has their tire pressure monitoring system. I think it's really cool that Cherokee went the camera route 
anything to help give you a better, smoother, safer, more enjoyable experience, I'm a fan, you know? What do you guys think? This thing is just, gosh, that is just so good looking. So what do you think? Does the JG stand for just great? <laughs> Fun little side note. JG actually represents uh, the initials of the Cherokee employee who came up with this layout. I think it's really cool how Cherokee um, incorporates and, and recognizes their staff that way. That's just, a, it really shows you how in tune they are with not just customers, but like their workforce and everything. It's, it's I don't think it's a mistake. They've become overall the Cherokee group as a whole, the number one retailing brand out there. They've become a monster. If you like what you see, give us a call here at Halet RV. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We only do everything else. Family owned and operated since 1989. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.